is again. As you can see, I have, well, that was a like a turning moment or something I got going on there. And I think I put this in a previous video. This is loaded. We know that now at 389 kips. It's got more kips than anything. Yet it's supposed to be in tension. So now it's pretty much, well, by default, by default, you've made it com a compressive member. You're counteracting your own tension forces on it. So that puts them, what, both in compression on the far end? Number 11 and number 10? Number 11 forces going down the uh, pylon, and number 10 forces being uh, out here at the bridge, the bottom, uh, the bottom canopy, the bottom deck. You know, there's 389 kips in here. seems pretty darn uh, weird to me. You know, it's counter forces to keep the... Uh, Keep these together, tie the two together, the bottom. So they acted like a plate. They acted as part of the, uh, the um, nodes that the, both, all four of them down in this case, inter inter interesting crossing over nine. Nine has no post tension members, no post tension members inside of it. So did this go down a compression and at compression they wanted to bring it back up so they somehow make up the four along the, two, the uh, four post-tension bars that not only put that in tension, but now it pulls it back up. It counterforces this, pulling it back up, and then down 11. I know that's, I'm looking at it differently, like a zigzag, you know, load-bearing capacity trick. Uh, yeah. That's it. And then this just keeps it, and this concrete just keeps it from, makes it a pivot point and not actually putting too much tension on the bottom. You know, something totally a little different. Remember, this is supposed to be cutting edge. You know, with that, can you visualize that? Let's just cut away a section of the bridge and not think of it as a standard truss. But imagine this was loaded, number nine. And typically you would go, okay, well, then this one's going to be tensioned, uh, sort of tension down here. And it got to compression there and it wraps it around the tension again, right? But imagine if you, the forces came down here, you countered them by basically hanging a cable from the ceiling and pulling it back up, taking the loads off. And once you got to this point, you said, hey, drive it down to here. Can you visualize that as a load path? I, I can, I can. All right, just a thought, because we have, again, a, a member that's supposed to be in tension, having the greatest amount of post-tension bars forces put into it, 389 times four. Hmm. With that said, that means that this node here is getting pulled down by uh, nine also. That, is, that, we're, that we're discounting the tension forces, a lot of it, in the, in the base of this deck. That this new crazy pattern of uh, this new idea of sharing the, pa the load path. Just, just, a, just a thought for you guys. I could sort of make that work in my brain, you know, ten times over. So let's, let's going over this again. That they're saying that they first, the, the BPA inspecting engineer says, we believe the first stressing operation has temporarily created tension in members 3 and 10. Create tension in members 3 and 10. That's creating cross sectional cracks. Okay, okay this is what I find very important. This is the letter dated, and watch this. So we just read the previous one where he said the cracks appeared after they post tensioned um, number 2 and 11. And they appeared on 10, right? 10 and 3. But yet, February 28th letter says, Please refer to the pictures attached regarding some cracks seen on the trust members of Span 1 after the removal of formwork. So in one statement, he says it's after post-tensioning. And the next statement, he says it's after removal of formwork. So it appears he's doubling down. One, he says it was moved after the removal of the formwork. And then two, if they were, and um, the cracks were there after that, and then he's talking about stressing. If these were expected during the bridge stressing, mm-hmm, or well, does he mean stressing also when you're removing the formwork? The one due to the size that we believe needs special attention is the crack shown in photos five, six, and seven. And he calls it stressing, okay. After formwork scaffold removal. So it's making it clear here. Cracks inspected on the trust members after formwork scaffolding removal. 
cracks reports after shoring removal, PDF. And this is a BP, uh, BPA. Uh, please refer to the pictures attached regarding some cracks seen on trust members of span one at the removal of the formwork. Okay, so this is clearly saying after the formwork. And then he's telling the, uh, he's also telling uh, uh, Rodrigo uh, to forward this to the ER, e, forward to the engineer of record, Danny Pate, for their information. Information, not for the responses, but we will monitor these or any other developing cracks on the bridge. So he's saying they're going to monitor developing cracks even. But we like to the EOR to provide response and determine if these were expected during the bridge stressing. So it appears removal of the form work is now called stressing, but we know that form work was not supposed to be stripped at all until or removed it until you had this uh, until it was placed in placed in, in place across the road. And it says we're specifically one crack. The one due to the size, and we don't have a size meter on it, right? No no gauge that we believe needs special attention is a crack shown in photos. <laughs> The one due to the size that we believe needs special attention is the crack shown in photos 5, 6, and 7. We've yet to see my 7. But there we are. Cracks are appeared after and before the um, post-tensioning was done. It was So before post-tensioning was done and after post-tensioning was done. This is the problem with this. Uh, this is where you got to just say this is just too unpredictable. And let's give you that again. So, five, six, and seven. It's five and six. So these are the major cracks, and this is an also open crack, but we don't have photo seven. And he also puts four, five, and six here, underside of structure. And so four, anyway. But we have a report here. Again, 77, 77 inches from the bottom. He just scaled it across. Okay. In his report, though, he makes it clear that um, for the uh, project performed or the visual inspection of the main span trust members on uh, February 6, 2018, after post tension bars, tenders number 2 and 11 were stressed. See, the cracks were found at the moment of the inspection. So after cracking, after stressing, the cracking appeared on number two and number 11, uh, correction, three and 10, uh, right down here, see? Uh, these have been identified per trust member and a consecutive number within the member. The intent is to monitor these cracks if the bridge is fully tensioned and the main span is at a final location. The members showing these small cracks are trust members that share the same blister at the canopy of the already stressed members uh, 2 and um, stressed on this date and 11, we know. We believe the first stressing operation has temporarily created tension on members 3 and 10. So we have new cracks appearing, not just removal of the formwork. So we have not just these cracks, but we have cracks appeared before post-tensioning. So here's my slow motion video. So we this is in perfect shape. Uh, save this ghosting, but so let's look at this. No, oh. this is where people are going to claim that this. I'm going to turn down the volume while I narrate over this. This is where I'm. The crack is on this side, north side of the node, and it's down here, as we can see in a moment. I thought maybe it could buckle behind this top part 11. I don't see it happening at all. But let's hit the hinge. I'm, I'm speeding up the video. So at this point, the uh, canopy is more collapsing. Let's see if I can slow this down for you guys. 
So we got a break back here. Let me pause it. We have a break here and we got a break on the north side. So at one point I said this is pushing it out and then it's going to drive down. You know, I don't, I don't care if it doesn't push it out, but you can see that it's no longer, it's a deformed triangle. This is not deformed. Again, this makes me think that uh, this was under, that, the, that this, well, north side broke first. Here's our second section that broke. As this falls, the canopy, the bottom deck finally pulls away. Obviously still connected here with the post-tension cables in there, longitudinal post-tension cables. It pulls it down, and when it pulls it away, this is so securely anchored, the uh, number 10-12 connection, that the bottom of number 11-12 connection, that the bottom of 11 stays um, at the top, at that connection. And as this comes down, it starts ripping out the post-tension bar inside here. And when it finally comes to an end, this finally falls down on top of the bottom deck and in front of the number, uh, in front of this node. So let's go with that. So this is falling already, so that would give you a slight deformation. It's already acting like a hinge here. How do I get more deformation um, here? I need this to break. It's hard to figure out which one's breaking first, the deck or the canopy. I'd have to say it was the canopy. Yeah, I gotta, I'm, I'm, I'm going to lean towards the canopy. I'll do either one. So the canopy breaks, uh, the, the, the voids in that canopy break first. This puts all the loads down, number 10 now. Even though you think it could still make it over. Now shock load, etc. Hits 10. It tries to make it out to the end of the deck with the, all the post-tensioning they have in there, longitudinal post-tension. It can't resolve it. It pretty much fails right where it comes down into contact with a little bit of cantilever, if you will, if you think of it that way, why it's over a little bit. Here's 10 in the zone of influence, if you will, for 10 is right there um, because the forces obviously are there. Forces look like a little arrow pointing down, if you will, a little P. And... Um, I'm done. Hmm.